the girls are going to try to gather me. And look, that's not what we're here for today. We're just here to have fun and talk about fragrance, but not these, these, these are bad. <laughs> They're pretty horrible. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another exciting fragrance video. Today, I'm sharing a bit of a spicy video, <laughs> and I have to give a shout out to my girl, Sheree. I will link her channel down below, of course. She is like a queen in the fragrance community. I love her video so much. And a few months ago, she did a top 10 fragrances that I'm not buying, and I just thought that video was such a great idea. You all know that sometimes I'm into really popular scents, but other times, times they just don't cut it for me. So today I'm here to share really 10 popular scents that I won't be purchasing. So if you guys would like to see which scents those are, please keep watching. So I do want to start by prefacing this video because I think it's important to note that this is no shade, no ill intent. This video is strictly my opinion and you know what they say about opinions. Everybody has one. I am not saying that if you love or have these scents that something is wrong with you, your taste or anything of the sort, these are just the fragrances that don't cut it for me. So this is just for comedic value and entertainment purposes and to get to know a little more about my fragrance taste and maybe why some of the fragrances that you all love or think that I would love just simply aren't in my collection. So let's get started. I have my list. Okay, <laughs> the first scent is Versace. It's not Dylan Blue, but it's like the Dylan Turquoise and I'll pop a picture in the screen. I think I tried it at an Ulta a few months ago and everyone's loving this scent. Now, I do own the Versace Dylan Blue, which I love. It's like an apple fresh scent. It's very like, it's a little masculine, but it's so sexy. It's like an elevated apple scent. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but the Turquoise one I just couldn't get with. You know what it reminded me of? <laughs> and this is another fragrance we're gonna talk about. It reminded me of Dolce & Gabbana light blue. It was just way too citrusy. There wasn't anything different about it. I have over 50 fragrances in my collection at this point. So when I'm thinking about scents that I would like to add to my collection, it's not that it has to be like so groundbreaking and amazing, but it has to give me something different than I already have in my collection. And I feel like I have enough citrusy scents, the Versace turquoise or what have you. I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. The Dylan turquoise didn't cut it for me. Okay, this next scent. <laughs> this is like an OG fave, an OG staple. And the first person that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this fragrance is my girl Coco McQueen, whom I love. I will link her channel down below. She is an Aqualina pink sugar lover. Now, this is a scent that was super, super popular probably when I was in high school. Like every it girl was rocking this fragrance. So I don't not like it because it's good. It just, it's too sweet. So Aqualina's pink sugar is like sugar to the 10th degree. Now I do know that uh, Coco McQueen loves sweet scents and she also likes vanillas. So maybe this is like a sweet vanilla type of scent. I don't know, when I smell it, it just makes my stomach hurt. But I do know there's an OG cult following of Aqualina pink sugar. Let me know down below if you have this scent. I feel like so many of us have it in our collections, but when I smell it, like it makes my stomach hurt. And I do have a few scents in my collection that are like really, really sweet. And if I spray too much because I love them, they make my stomach hurt. So Aqualina Pink Sugar is a no for me, unfortunately. The next scent is a newer sweet one. And this is Parfum de Marly Oriana. <sighs> And you know, I hate to say this because this is another popular sweet scent that smells a lot like Killian's Love, Don't Be Shy. And that is such a popular fragrance here on YouTube. I smelled it last summer and oh my goodness, it smells like a sweet tart. That is the same exact essence that I get from Oriana from Parfum de Marly. Just too sweet. Like, 
I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just not a sweet fragrance lover. Like I like to smell sexy and sweet, not like sugary and sweet. So that Oriana fragrance kind of gives me sugary and sweet. I know the girls are loving it. My girl AI the Great, Aisha, you all are loving that fragrance. It just doesn't do it for me. And I wanted to love it so much. I tried it a few times. I even have a sample. <laughs> but I just can't get with it. Maybe if I wear it on the skin, I would like it, but no. And for as much as it costs, absolutely not Parfum de Marly. No, thank you. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a spicy one as well. <laughs> the next fragrance or fragrance house or fragrance brand or group that I am not here for and that I am not purchasing Oh, I feel so bad for saying this. Kayali fragrances, you guys. I know, I know, I know. Don't come for me. Let me explain. So I have purchased a few Kayali fragrances. I own a mini of the Eden Juicy Apple. We'll get to her in a moment. I've owned the Invite Only Amber 23. That smells just like MFK's Grand Soir, but like not as long lasting. And Grand Soir is one of my favorite fragrances when I'm going to smoke cigars or sit outside by the fire pit. Like, oh, it's androgynous sex appeal. Like we love that moment. I just find that Kayali fragrances don't do it for me. And I want to love them. There are still fragrances on my list that I would love to smell, like the vanilla one or the white flower one. There are a few that I would like to try. There's one in the black bottle called Elixir. But of the ones that I have tried, I have not been impressed. Oh, they just don't do it to me. They, they, don't, they don't do it to me and they don't do it for me. The Kayali Eden Juicy Apple smells like a body splash. It literally smells like you went to Bath and Body Works and got a fruity scent for summer and sprayed it all over you. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I still like a good body splash. There's a time and a place, but not for upwards of $100. No, ma'am, we're not doing that. The next scent. Ugh, this video is so spicy, and I really hope no one's taking this personally. This next scent is from a perfumer that I was so excited about. It's Frederick Mall's Portrait of a Lady. I actually purchased like a $75 tiny fragrance travel size, whatever. And oh my goodness, I wish I had gotten my first impression on camera. It smells like a little old lady rose. Now you all know rose fragrances are some of my favorites. I love a good rose, but like, I don't wanna smell that mature. And that gave me straight up old lady rose. It's oftentimes compared to another fragrance I'll populate it on the screen. It's not coming to my head. It smells nothing like it. Portrait of a Lady is an absolute no for me. It smelled horrible. I wanted to love it because Frederick Mall has amazing scents. Or so I've heard because the two I've tried, um, Carnal Flower and Portrait of a Lady, I was just like, what the hell is going on? A great, great pass for me. And I returned that $75 vial really, really quickly. So absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, what is happening in this video? Okay, I'm gonna get so much flack for what I'm about to say. The next house designer that I'm not here for, that I'm not purchasing any more fragrances unless I find something that really captivates me is Tom Ford, okay? I have just not been impressed. I'm talking Bitter Peach, Lost Cherry, Soleil Blanc, all the Amafi Coast, all, all the other ones. The only one that I like is Soleil Neige. I love Soleil Neige. It gives me something different that I was missing in my collection. It's my sun goddess scent. It smells like you are in the Hamptons in the wintertime and the sun is shining and you're wrapped up in a coat, maybe even a Barefoot Dreams robe and scarf, and you're just living life. But the other ones I can't get with. They don't have great longevity. They're very expensive. Um, yeah. Now I do like his uh, Pour, Pour Femme or something. There is one other fragrance by Tom Ford that I like, but I think what I'm responding to is his private collection. Yeah, no. The Bitter Peach smelled absolutely horrible. Now I have heard that you have to wear it on your skin, but if I don't even like it, on a fragrance card or out of the container. I'm damn sure not putting it on my skin, so that's a no. The Lost Cherry, I heard, has a horrible lasting power, so I got a dupe. The dupe works just fine, 
Yeah, I'm sorry Tom for I love your eyewear, like your sunglasses and your eyeglasses. I'll probably be purchasing some. But as far as fragrances, I just can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> the next scent is one that I actually spoke about a little earlier. This is Killian's Love Don't Be Shy. This is a sweet tart. It's candy. Like I said, I like to smell sweet, but my sweet scents either have to be very fruity and tropical or sexy and androgynous because Love Don't Be Shy, the extreme, the original, it's just giving me candy and I don't wanna smell like candy. <laughs> so that was a, mm -mm. that was an absolute no for me. <laughs> Oh, the next one. Why is this video so spicy? This next brand is a brand that I love overall. It's Byredo. So I actually received Byredo's 11th hour this past Christmas because that scent epitomizes Christmas. It's spicy, it's sweet, it has a note of carrot and cedar. It just smells like cloves, fresh cloves in a pot of water on the stove on Christmas morning. It is so nostalgic for me. I will only wear that fragrance around the holiday time. And I wanted it knowing such. But when I tell you that she doesn't even last an hour, Byredo, we have to chat. I love your brand overall. I love the look of your bottle. Like you did very well with your branding. But when it comes to the longevity and the sillage of your fragrances, like why would I spend that much on a fragrance that's gonna disappear in an hour? That's a body splash. That is a glorified body splash. And for upwards of $300, I just can't do it. I will spend whatever needs to be spent on a fragrance, but it has to have properties that actually make sense for the price. As far as Byredo is concerned, absolutely not. I do love a lot of the scents, but for me to pay that much for a fragrance that I have to decant and take it with me and spray every hour, like why? Like why? Absolutely not. And the last fragrance that I wanna talk about, Replica Fragrances. These are by Maison Martin Margiela. I am not here for them. My favorite scent was discontinued. It was lipstick on. It's a beautiful, waxy, old school Hollywood glamour. Like you're a pinup and you're backstage powdering your nose and your decolletage and putting a little glimmer and sheen on there but it only lasted about an hour. Now, once again, I love the whole branding behind the replica fragrances. I love that they are all reminiscent of a time and place by the fireside, lazy Sunday morning, barbershop. I love it. Y'all know I love a little bit of nostalgia. If you take me to a different place, you captivated me and I love it. But the longevity, and I don't know if it's my body chemistry and the fact that I'm a hot sweater or anything like that, but no, replica fragrances for sure I just can't do because now I have to decant it and take it with me. Once again, these scents are beautiful. I love a plethora of them, but they just don't last. That was a hard pass for me as well. Oh, and then I forgot to mention the Dolce & Gabbana light blue, and then I was looking online and they have a light blue forever. Now here's what I'll say about light blue. Dolce & Gabbana's light blue is one of those fragrances that I think makes an excellent first fragrance. If you're trying to graduate maybe from a body splash and you wanna get into fragrance, I I think trying Dolce & Gabbana's light blue makes sense. There are probably five or six scents I think that every woman or man needs to try when they are trying to find their scent profile, and that's one of them. It's a really beautiful, effervescent citrus fragrance, but for me, it just doesn't do it. There's not enough depth to it. I would need a sweet note or a spicy note. It's a very nice, crisp, light, clean spring fragrance, but it just doesn't do it for me. Now, I haven't smelled the Forever one, but I doubt I'll like it. I don't know. I'm just not a Dolce & Gabbana light blue girl. I feel like you either love that fragrance and you wear it every single summer or you just cannot stand it and I am in the latter group. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Once again, I hope no one took it offensively. I am not here to bash your fragrances. That is not who I am. These are just merely fragrances that I refuse to purchase. Once again, I will link Sheree's video down below where she spoke about the 10 fragrances that she's not purchasing. I just think 
it's nice to know people's scent palette because I'm going to be doing a video next month about blind buying. And one of my biggest tips is to follow people who have a similar scent profile or love of a scent profile as you. And you guys have seen obviously the fragrances that I love, but you really never get to hear about the ones that I don't like or the ones that I'm not purchasing. So I hope this video was fun and a little informational. I love you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.